so Willie stepped up not just as an organization, but as an individual to say, here's what's going on in Central America, and here's what we got to learn, and you know what, I'm coming to D.C. and we're going to talk about it, and I'm taking folks down there, because this is not just about working in the United States, this is about working around the planet, around the world, and we're going to come back to D.C. and we're going to talk to them about what's going on there. And we're going to talk to the congressman to say, you must oppose this. Every time Willie talked about that, and with his family and so many of our families, Henry can tell you about this in terms of the book he wrote on the American GI Forum, the Latino population and the, the history and the connection we have to serving this country is unbelievable. Um, two of my uncles were our local GI Forum chapter in Topeka, Kansas, the Ranghel Brothers chapter is named after a couple of my uncles who were killed in the Korean War. And so Willie would always talk about saying, don't try this thing about we're not patriotic. We are more patriotic than any of you. A higher percentage of us are getting sent over there. You know what? We're willing to go. But it better be right. And you better be straight with us. So I think if Willie were here today, he would be questioning about a lot of the things that were kind of coming up. Who knows exactly where he would be? But I think he would be saying a big part of this as a community for us is to really kind of be stepping back and saying, what can we learn? This is a tough time. What happened? And is this the right thing to do? And so I think he would be leading the charge to really make sure, because he knew, I mean, my wife and I, we sit there on Sunday mornings, we're watching the talk shows, and you know, you watch this week, and at the end of the show, when George does his thing where he does the in memoriam, and it just kills you every week when you just see the names scrolling across, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old kids, a big chunk of them who are coming out of our community, and uh, I think that's where Willie would be today. My, my final uh, prepared question, and then I, I really do want you all to please weigh in. I'm waiting for someone to step up to that mic. Um, also puts you on the spot, because you knew we were going to get to this. We are on the cusp of a very important national election. Some people say this may be the most important election in a generation, if not more. What would Willie be having to say to us about the choices before the American people on November the 2nd? Yeah, and, and Lydia's going to come up to talk about this next. Um, get her, we'll get her on. Right, sure. I, I think, you know, I, I think the real thing is, once again, a big piece for Willie in moving forward, and I think Lydia and Antonio and the folks at Southwest Voter have kept this piece going moving forward, and that is how do we even talk about these issues. Naleo is doing a good job as well, too. So I think Willie would be up there kind of really making sure that these conversations were first taking place that we were kind of going around the country and, and meeting with Latino leaders and folks in the community like Southwest Voter has been doing and will continue to do to say, what do you think? And what's going on for you? And here are the issues. And you know what, Latino elected officials, you guys need to be hearing this. Community organizing groups doing the same kind of thing. But I think, once again, Willie would say, for him, because being a Mexican, but for him, the question of any particular group for the Latino community, he would say, you need to look deep down inside and say what's going to be best for our community. And, and we need to not say that's a bad thing. And that means you need to take a stance. And so I think he would be pushing it to say let's look at the issues. I actually, you know, it's interesting because one of the things I was thinking about with Willie, I was talking to this, someone else about this the other day. Um, Willie, like so many of the folks, uh, and at that particular time when Willie had passed away, computers really hadn't completely caught on yet. So there's a part of me that says I would, I would be curious to see what Willie would have been doing with the Internet, for example. Because when I think about it, Willie, before the Internet was around, was, was a walking, talking, political website, right? He was the guy who knew everything about Right nowadays, you go to the note every day and you see Mark Halpert and the ABC stuff. We all read it because we're political junkies. We stay on top of it. You find your own local version of that. Willie was a walking, talking version of that. Like I said, he knew everything from the tiniest little race to the top. And so I think Willie would be continuing to push to say, our community needs to be involved in these conversations. And we need to be bringing these folks in. I mean, Southwest Voter did it with bringing some of the top candidates in and asking them point blank, where do you stand on these issues that are really important to the Latino community? And I think that's where he would be. And Willie loved the fact that part of his job was how do we get Latinos into these different campaigns? And let's talk to both sides. And so uh, he would have been plotting and scheming, and they'd be talking to Mickey and all these folks and trying to figure out who's in there, who's not. Let's get people in there because we've got to be in both camps. And I think probably one of the interesting pieces he would also be talking about would be what's going to happen to the Latino vote, not just on November the 2nd, but going beyond. A lot of people know that there was a increase, particularly in the Mexican vote, but in the Latino vote as a whole for President Bush in 2000. 
And when you scratch about it, how did that happen? This is a very democratic vote. And a lot of people will tell you that at least a chunk of it has to do with the fact that um, Texan Latinos voted for President Bush. If you talk to them, why did you vote for him? Estano? He's from Texas. You know, like, got to vote for one of ours. So the real question is whether it's going to carry past this time to what's going to happen where there's a non-Texan on the on the ticket for the Republicans. Will it still be there for the Latinos or not? So I think Willie would be pushing all those kind of things. And partly because of his job, he would doing it be behind the scenes, right? And so I think he would be pushing people to say, okay, Kerry, this is great. We're Democrats. Traditionally, a lot of us have supported him. But he'd be pushing, saying, what are you really doing for us? And what really are you going to be saying? And so while I think individually, personally, away from the organization, right, he would be talking about supporting Senator Kerry. I mean, let's just be honest about it. In his day job, he wouldn't be doing that. In his day job, he would be pushing both of the candidates, but he would also be pushing Senator Kerry saying, this is not about show. We want to see what you're really going to be doing and what you're really going to be talking about. But also because of his relationships to the Republican Party, he, I think, fortunately for us, would be doing the same thing on the other side as well. That's kind of where I think Willie would be in the election that's about to take place in a couple of weeks. Interesting. And now your turn. Questions, thoughts, comments, anyone? Mickey? Thank you, Mickey Ibarra. Uh, I want to thank both Juan and Henry first. I think it's been a fascinating conversation. I also want to mention uh, Delegate Ana Sol Guterres, who has now joined us from Maryland, the, the first Latina ever elected to the Maryland uh, House of Delegates. We're very proud of her. I had the privilege of meeting Willie Velasquez in 1985, and he found me. At that time, I was new to the National Education Association, the NEA, and he was very, very hopeful that he would be able to start a relationship with a Mexicano that found uh, the opportunity to work for a major union. Um, I'm so delighted to be a part of a conference that is really celebrating his legacy and his life, uh, someone who's made such an important contribution. And I'm thinking, Juan, that this has been a work of love of yours, putting his biography together for a long, long time. And as you did your research and think about your own personal experience with him, I'm wondering what has su what surprised you the most about Willie. There must have been some discovery, something that just didn't quite fit perhaps, or at least surprised you when you came upon it. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to share that with us. Sure, sure. No, th that's a great question. Um, Can I just quickly, I'm sorry, I want to interrupt you, but I want to acknowledge Mickey and his team. Mickey Ibarra and Associates were instrumental in helping put this event together, and he's deserving of our thanks for that. Thank you very much. Back to you now. Yeah, when they told me Mickey was going to be involved with this, I thought, okay, everything's going to be fine. Um, it's a great question, and a and couple things. One is where we started today about why Willie is important and why Southwest voters is important, both in Latino political history but American political history, is nothing new to me and to a lot of us who knew him, but is obviously the reason why we're really kind of focusing on Willie's work. And so I think when we talk about what's surprising, that's not surprising. What's and it, and it was, this wasn't even really that surprising to me, but I'm always asking people how many folks even knew Willie. And, it, and it, I guess I'm a little surprised how few people knew Willie in political circles. I, I expect that kind of in the general population. But I thought even within political circles, there was still a little bit of who was this guy? But that would have been great for Willie because he, you know, he always used to say, we don't do voter registration by press conference, right? It's all about kind of, you know, one of the hardest things we had for the book was finding pictures because he just didn't take pictures. It wasn't about him, it was about kind of getting the work done. But like all of us, we're, we're, you know, we're a product of our stories. And so it, when I think about the surprising pieces that I didn't know about Willie, some which were tough to kind of hear about and some which were great. You heard Raul talk about one of them, which was when Willie was a, was a college student. And I just kind of always had this thing in my head like, Okay, Willie, I remember him always telling me about the farm workers and they, these guys were crazy in the 60s and the 70s and they were doing all this stuff in Mayo and Raso Unida and the Mexican-American Unity Council, the first uh, Latino community development corporation in the country, the Bishop's Committee for the Spanish. I, I just had this vision of these guys being in college and just finishing up. They spent all their time just, you know, causing trouble uh, and having a great time and pushing the system. I would have never have thought that a few years before that, Willie was 
hanging out in Washington, D.C., be 